Welcome everyone to Ripple's live SEO audit workshop in partnership with QuickBot. Today, the founder of QuickBot, Robert Battle, will free SEO audits for your websites, helping you identify areas for improvement and offering actionable tips for optimizing your online presence. Before I turn it over to Robert, I'd like to quickly introduce Replo. Replo is a visual web development platform that allows teams to create beautiful, high-performance landing pages on Shopify without the need for developers. Replo is light years ahead of other page builders when it comes to customization and page speed. We have a library of hundreds of proven landing page templates that anyone can use, as well as certified experts who can help build pages in just a few days. We'd like to thank Robert for hosting this event and for providing his expertise. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of SEO and discover how to unlock its true potential. All right, appreciate that, Justin. So let's get started today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna briefly cover what is SEO, for anyone that doesn't know. We're gonna talk about that maybe for five minutes, just highlight you know, our approach, why it's so novel, why it works so well, and why we are the anti-agency. Uh, and then we'll just start basically diving right into a, a few user submitted websites. Uh, we'll go through them. We'll tear, we'll tear them, tear them up. We'll tear them down. We'll build them back up, and we'll figure out what, how we can really move the needle with these sites. So, let's just go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so you know, first off, let's actually start out with with just a quite a simple math equation. You know, what actually is SEO? You know, from what we've seen, and we we actually devise this as a math equation also because we SEO only from the data driven standpoint. Meaning that the data should really tell us how to, you know, what type of content to create, you know, how to actually gain links, you know, how to really build off everything that we do to make sure that Google sees us in the best light possible. So we like to just break it down to a simple equation. You know, SEO, strong SEO is just equal to good links and really good content, quite simply. Our agency focuses almost solely on the content. And this is because with good content, you actually automatically not occur uh, links so that so you actually already get links from having good content and one of the examples we're going to show you today uh, has exactly that and we're going to bring that up to you later but it's the idea that the old school idea is that you have to buy links or you have to really kind of push to get links but in today's world when everything is you know social media driven everything is through likes and shares etc you really don't need to buy links you don't really you don't really need to go out and search for links if you have really good content that answers user search intent uh, and you're building topical with your content, then you know all of this will just flow in freely. So, anyways, uh, there's a few other areas we can get into maybe for a future discussion, Justin, like affiliate links, for example. Um, but that's a whole different category. But other than that, let's keep going. So the timeline for SEO. So everyone, the big SEO myth and you know fact in some standpoints is that SEO takes a long time to work. Well, what I always like to say to prospective clients is you know define what you mean by work you know what exactly are the results you're looking for obviously it's money but here's how it works money and sales here's how it works is that there's a lot of leading indicators to let you know that you're on the right direction so this is super important so for example uh content is where you start once you get content on your website th that content will start to become indexed and start to be ranked for certain keywords by google once you start to basically win these keywords, they'll start rising in the ranks and you'll start getting click impressions. Once you get these impressions from Google, meaning the company, your website is showing up in the search results, then you get clicks. And clicks are what basically drive, drive customers, ideal customers, from the Google search results, from their question, to your solution or to your product. You know, nine times out of 10, you are the solution to so many new customers' problems, they just don't know you exist. That's why SEO is so pivotal. Once they click over to your website, then you focus on conversions and making them convert and ultimately granting you sales. Whenever, whenever you get the content and the keywords done right, if you, if you target that properly and build out proper content maps and really use data to drive your, your initial planning, everything else falls into place. The impressions will come naturally. The clicks will happen organically. If you're focused on user experience and the conversions will happen anyways, whether, whether you're optimized or not, and that's a lot of the art of this. And so we focus our entire agency's offering all in this very beginning part of the timeline, the content and keywords, while of course tracking and turning all the metrics that lead up to the dollars. Because a huge area of, of issue with traditional SEO firms is communication. Uh, but not just you know standard communication, because obviously anyone can put together a 10-page report about nothing, which is what a lot of these companies do. 
but it's more about communicating what matters, you know, simplifying what SEO is. It is it is a mystical black box and it shouldn't be because all it is is just data and numbers because Google themselves are just an algorithm. So you can immediately see the metrics and you can know you're on Mac when you're tracking it just like this. Going forward, how do we actually do it? So one, you apply best practices. If we don't mean traditional best practices, you know, we mean like, you know, really focusing on how to how to portray your website to Google. So they're not guessing. So they actually know exactly what your website's about. And that goes into structure, heading structure and HTML. It goes into answering questions and really building that topical authority. And then ultimately, uh, you know, it does hit a few traditional SEO items like meta descriptions, title tags, but to be honest, never going to move the needle. If you right now are listening and you're paying an SEO company, uh, however many thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars to run your campaigns, and if they're talking about image sizing and meta descriptions and title tags, you should fire them today. Seriously, uh, they're doing nothing. Anyways, two, leverage competition's budget. So that is very, very key. All the data is out there for us to grab, for us to leverage, for us to build off of. Uh, these other companies have gotten to the top of your industry by doing the right. If you look at their data closely, we can figure out exactly what that is. And that, that is an art, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And then three, test strategically and track obsessively. You have to know when you actually get a win. You have to know what maybe looks like a win, but isn't. You have to know that you're testing all these different strategies and ideas and they're actually working, what's working and what's sticking. And you know, SEO is just literally just testing methodically. That is all it is. And you find out what works. You know, we don't know how Google ranks in our websites, but we do know who Google is currently ranking. So you can work backwards to reverse engineer and figure that out. And the goal of course is to maximize value. Every single dollar spent needs to be to earn these metrics. And if you're not testing and tracking properly, you're never gonna figure that out. So the goal is to make sure that every dollar is, is the best possible place you could put it for your website, for your content, for your marketing, ultimately for your future sales. So if there's any one slide you guys can take away from this period, it would be this. I mean, these are giving away our testing factors that we've found to be the most important ones out there. And that's just the URL being exact match. I'm gonna show you guys some examples of this today. You know, it's making sure that your heading structure is properly laid out. Because whenever Google looks at your page, they're just looking at it like this. You know, they're looking at the heading structure. They're taking down your HTML and breaking it down to, to decipher what your page is all about. And once we uncover that and figure that out, and we, we present your web page to Google on a silver platter, the metrics just fly. It's, uh, it's impressive. And then finally, what we're also building is structure. You know, we want every single page to be holistically valued on your website meaning that your supporting content backs up your collection pages, which backs up all the products within them. Google is going to crawl your site, your pages independently, and your website holistically. So you have to make sure it all makes sense together and that you're basically constantly building out these, these content silos effectively and with that everything is within the same topics. So that way, once you achieve topical authority, everything flies up. Cool. So the, the audits we're going to do today, there's three goals of them each. Uh, one is to identify strengths and weaknesses of each website. That is step one. We have to figure out what we're doing great, and we have to figure out where are some opportunities we can capture. We'll go into that as well. Number two, identify the most important keywords. And this might seem you know, counterintuitive to a degree because we actually do want to target the most important keywords out there. Like, for example, this first, this first client we're going we're gonna to walk through, they, they're a, a company effectively from what I can tell. So their main keywords are probably gonna be like Chino jeans. They're gonna be certain types of jeans that are some of their best selling products. Ideally their most profitable products. That's also another important pitch that you know that we make versus other you know SEO companies. We want to focus on your profitable items. We want to make we want to make sure you make more money so we can keep building and growing your you know your site and your marketing efforts. So you have to figure out what those most important keywords are, and then we work backwards. We figure out the competition, and we work backwards from that. That's number three. Identify competition, and then prescribe the strategy based on what they've done to get ahead. Awesome. So let's get started. So cool. So let me share my screen here again, and we will start going through a couple case studies. And this is where the fun begins. This is where we're going to tear it down. You know, we're going to go through. So these are actually these are we're kind of we're going into cold. Uh, we're going in cold with these. I just found out about these websites recently um, from people that registered. So those are watching. If you're not, no worries. Um, we're going to cover these, and then there are probably going to be a few more we're also going to cover as well after, just if time allows. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So we specialize in e-commerce, and 
in e-commerce, websites are designed systematically, and most of them flow through Shopify. So if Shopify has a problem with their website, it's basically found on every single website out there. It's also important to note, and we're going to cover a few topics there. But the good thing is we can really understand their page structure, how their website's actually laid out very easily, just because we know it's a Shopify website. So for example, Mon and Bo. So whenever they reached out, uh, also just first, before we look at any metrics, uh, we're going to use Ahrefs also as the SEO tool of choice. You know, it is our main tool that we use, period, with, with Ahrefs alone. And with a little bit of elbow grease, you can make any website rank, period. Uh, you don't need all these fancy SEO surfer tools to optimize your pages. Yeah, they make it easier, but it's not that important. So what I like to do at the beginning of any website audit is go in cold. I like to make, make assumptions. I like to look at their website, make sure that, you know, everything looks clean, everything makes sense. If I'm clicking in the right areas, it's going to the right places, right? Like, for example, I want to see how their collection pages look, you know, all the different filters they have optionality wise like it all looks it all looks super great i mean i think mon and Bo has done a really good job of this so because of that i would expect they probably have pretty decent seo and that's something that we're going to obviously take a look at and that's the assumption that i'm trying to make here uh, you know one thing here that i'm immediately seeing is we go back to the url concept uh the product url is could certainly be optimized further so these are the things that we're kind of looking out for. You know, we want to we want to every single time you're creating a product or creating a collection page or creating any page on your website, really, you need to think about what keywords you want to be ranking for on that page. Uh, and if you do that, it's just going to save you so much time in the long run. But you can always, of course, still change and create redirects and monitor that and make sure that every, all the traffic shifts properly, which we do regularly because it make it's the easiest way to boost traffic. Let's say that you wanted to make this page rank for fitted V-neck. You literally type, well, we have to first <clears throat> assume that fitted v-neck is the best keyword. And if it is, you just literally type it in up here, and we basically just create redirects to make that happen, and then monitor it and make sure that, that this page is the best possible page on the website to rank for v-neck. But anyways, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. Here's just to kind of take a look at the structure, how the headings are laid out, you know, what makes sense. You know, it looks it's interesting they've got an email in their meta description, but still. You know, this is clean, thankfully. Doesn't look too bad. You know, normally whenever we see this, looks like maybe they do have, um, looks like men and women. Is that, okay, yeah, so that's their header. So their header has actually got heading tags in it, which is not great. So just maybe food for thought, fix that. Because what we're going to do here is we want to we want to clean up a lot of the headings to make sure when you add content to it, your content can shine and really kind of bleed through and Google understands that very quickly. So anyways, I think that that's enough for the overall kind of going in cold. It looks like it's a great site, probably converts well. Let's see their strengths. Let's see their weaknesses in the data now. So we just drop in Mont and Bow in Site Explorer. We're going to use the page overview 2.0, and we're just going to take a look at it. Domain rating, very high. I mean, it looks great. Like that, that makes sense. I mean, based on how well polished their website is, it makes that they're well talked about in their industry, which ultimately is what domain rating effectively is. <clears throat> They've got a lot of high quality links going back to them. They probably do some affiliate marketing, which also boosts their links. They probably have like, you know, Glamour Magazine, et cetera, you know, US, US Magazine, all these big links probably going to them uh, for affiliate links, but speaks to the quality, looking strong. So their keywords are, are decent. Uh, I think we're gonna, we need to compare them. We need to compare them to some other, other people in their space, which we will really, uh, to really get a better idea, but keywords and traffic looks fine. Um, but the main thing I'm really concerned with is looking at the organic keyword chart. So there's a bit of a misconception that, you know, people looking at SEO are going to be focusing mostly on organic traffic. While that is important, organic keywords actually precede organic traffic. Uh, you know, it's not a no brainer, but <clears throat> from that standpoint, also, I don't like looking at organic traffic on these tools because it's just an estimate of an estimate effectively. You know, estimating how much traffic they think you should be getting based on their estimated monthly searches per keyword. So the true answer for this organic traffic is going to be in your Google Analytics. So because of that, I almost never look at it. Uh, while it, it is a good showing of how strong your page one rankings are, or specifically your top one through three rankings, it's not as important. This chart, though, is the bread and butter. The organic keyword chart. I look at it kind of like an onion, which let me explain that. But basically, we want to peel back the layers. So, for example, this chart is a stacked chart showing all your different keyword rankings and the quantity of keywords at each level. But what I'm really looking for here is trends. I'm looking to make sure the trends are positive across the board 
and really finding where they're not. We're, every single website we're going to audit, and in general, whenever I look at a website, we look at it from a macro to a micro view. Macro meaning the whole website as a whole, holistically, every single page compiled into one chart, looking at what those keywords look like. Then we start to break it down, top pages, uh, or really the keyword uh, acquisition rate of each URL, which it's going to make more sense when I show that to you in a second. And then finally, we look at organic keywords. And the keywords, of course, are the in-game goal, but to get there, we have to make sure everything else makes sense. So just looking at their overall health, this is page five and up keywords. I mean, obviously it looks healthy. The trend is strong. It's higher than it's been in the past two years. Wonderful. Looks good. Let's keep it going. It, the angle of attack, it's a little bit greater. Looks good. It's even better on page two. Wonderful. Page one is also ripping. So whatever you guys are doing, you're doing it great. Uh, and so that's important to note here. The things that I'm going to call out in this audit are just going to be ways you can really utilize your domain authority and weaponize your SEO to really hit some of the, the key target keywords that uh, I'm sure that we all know that you need to be ranking for. For example, Chino Jeans, which we'll cover that in a second. So then secondly, once we've assessed the overall site just by looking at, you know, the organic keywords by quantity, by level, then we're going to dive into the top pages, which is the top page report. And I love this because now we're going, uh, we're still macro, we're still looking at the whole site, but we're looking at it from a page by page basis. We're going to compare pages and we don't care about organic traffic. Remember, we're going to compare organic keywords, super important. And so then we get this graph or this, this chart really. And it, it basically shows every URL uh, color coded and basically mapped based on their keyword action. Uh, this is important. It only shows the ones we have clicked, which are like the top 10. And it's also skewed because the home page is actually much higher than everything else. Now, while this is pretty common, in the biggest success stories that we find and what we're really moving the needle on, your home page, if, if your home page outranks all the other pages on your website, it's a good, it's a good indicator that you guys have a lot more bandwidth that you can move traffic and keywords around to other pages of your website. And what I mean by that is a, it's basically an indicator for how confused Google is with your SEO. Meaning if Google doesn't know what to rank all these other pages for all these keywords, they're just going to rank your homepage because they, they feel like based on their data that you're an authority, but they don't, they, they want to make sure they're mapping their visitors to the right keyword, the right page. But if they can't figure that out, which one that should be, they're just going to put it on your homepage. So this means that you have a lot of optimization you can do, which means you have a lot of potential on your SEO side to keep growing farther. Now, if we remove that and we look at the other top nine, we start to see a lot more of a clear picture. You know, which of these are moving up at a higher acquisition rate? And if we zoom in on a six month from the two year view, we can start looking closer and closer. And now we can see here that you've actually created this wonderful blog topic for a gene, si gene size chart. And that's really important because obviously we saw your most popular product are your jeans. Great. And so this sizing chart is great for user experience. It is content still. So it, it, it's, it, there's no doubt in my mind why this thing is ranking higher and higher. And it, it has such a nice, strong, you know, acquisition rate. Like let's look at it by itself like that. Like, look at that. That's a strong angle. Love that. Love to see that. I don't want to see it stall out. If you see it stall out ever, you know, update the content, refresh it, you know, add some FAQs to it, add some frequently asked questions that you find with the Google search results, which you can find by literally typing in uh, jeans sizing into Google and it really tell you right here a bunch of their, their top search questions on what you should basically be answering within your web page, which you can put it into a collapsible accordion style FAQ that Replo offers as well. Shout out to Justin and Replo. So I highly recommend looking at that. Just make sure that if you do that, that you're tagging these as H2s, and we'll cover that a little bit too as well. Anyways, that's only if it stalls out or if you want to basically make it actually increase at a higher rate also. Because uh, this, this can still go even more, you know, you can increase even more drastically. But what I love to see here is that it's basically been increasing since the very beginning of the year. It hasn't stalled out, which means it's just now getting its legs. So this thing is going to keep running probably for months and months, and this is going to become your top ranked page over time. Most likely it's going to basically be stripping keywords off your homepage and onto this page. Uh, because what's also happening is I'm, I can guarantee you this chart page is getting a bunch of links going to it. Okay. It's only got one right now, which is amazing. I'm surprised you got one link, you know? So if you guys actually syndicated this out further with your social media channels, you should be getting a lot more links to this. And that's just going to cause the angle of attack to even go even higher. But 
how SEO really works is a few pages make up the value of a lot of pages. You know, meaning that a page like this, if done properly, if you syndicate it well enough, you know, this page, you can even see it right now cutting through all the noise. Like it's just going to keep going and going and going. So you always want to play into strengths. First recommendation is let's build this page out. And I haven't even looked at this page yet. So let's take a look at it. But I mean, I can already imagine that it's pretty useful. I mean, look at that. So it's just got literal, it's just literally got the charts. It talks about how to get move or how to get measurements. It looks great. It's got some infographics, but it's still very short form. Oh, you actually do have an FAQ. That's wonderful. Let's make sure things are being tagged properly. So we want to make sure that we serve this up to Google on a silver platter. Okay, so there's another opportunity here for you to optimize. It's like, yeah, this is perfect. This H1 and your URL here, gene size chart, gene size chart for men and women, are probably the two main reasons why this is ranking so well. Probably coupled with a pretty strong click-through rate, rate because people see what they want to see here. They notice what they need to go, and they basically move on, and they, they got their information they need. So that's wonderful. But looking closer, right, uh, I think this is good. You know, women, gene size. But maybe we change this to guide. Change that to guide because again, change you want you want your headings to also match search intent. So use your headings to also grab long tail keywords, which I imagine you know gene size sizing guide is probably another good one there to grab. Uh, then your FAQs. While the FAQ is properly an H2, these should also be H2s. Okay, actually this is interesting because these are clearly not the FAQs. So for some reason this is pulling in as most likely paragraph text that's just bolded. So these should be H2s as well. Yeah, it's just it's just bolded paragraph text. So again, whenever Google does this, now what's happening is they're reading this and they're expecting an FAQ, but they're not getting an FAQ. You know, they're getting like for example, you could have your FAQs, these questions as H3s, that would make sense, or as H2s to make them more prominent, which we love doing. Uh, but they're basically seeing this and they're seeing 12 ways of styling black jeans for an elevated style. It doesn't really look like an FAQ, so they're probably discounting this to a degree. So and these are very valuable because, I mean, if you found these questions to put on here, then I knew that users are looking for these answers. So they should be seen by Google and they should be called out. Uh, by having them as paragraph, you're discounting their impact entirely. Google is barely even putting any value into these if you're not marking them as the proper heading. Cool. And then what I would say is I would I would build this thing out, make this FAQ like make it an accordion so it doesn't look it doesn't look as you know messy, but just completely add so much more content to it uh, because you could easily boost this up to you obviously have a ton now, but I think a lot of the words could be coming from other areas. So there's a lot of opportunity here because it doesn't look like 5,000 words, but who knows maybe the tool's broken. Either way though. Uh, I would just build it out. I mean, I would almost write a gene size guide blog and just tack it on to the bottom of this post straight up. Because again, we're trying to always be playing into strengths. So I, I would really love to see this thing go completely vertical and just keep leveraging it. Because this one article could end up, you know, earning you a ton of business. And that all the click through rates you get from all from this one page ranking will boost every other page on your website. Because it's going to seem to, it's going to give Google all the right signals that everything is moving up. So. Really powerful. I didn't expect to spend so much time on this page, to be honest, but uh, this is just such an opportunity here. Um, even though it is going great, I think it can go even better. So, again, now let's go into the keywords. Now we're getting micro, right? We got sidetracked, but let's go micro. So, we're going to go a little bit deeper here and let's look at organic keywords. So, whenever we go, we're just still on Ahrefs, Site Explorer, Mont and Bow. We're going to go to organic keywords and we're going to, whenever you first open it up, it's actually going to be filtered by traffic. So we're or sorted by traffic. So let's look at that first. So let's look at what keywords are drawing all of your customers in. Lo and behold, a lot of them are branded, which makes sense. Like like 90% of your keywords are are branded. You're also taking out paid advertisement on your brand name, which makes sense. You have to do that to defend your territory. Only if competitors are taking out against your name. But that's actually going to make it. It's going to skew your results on your and your ad campaign. You're going to think that your ad campaign is you know uh, ripping for your your name, but in reality, you're just kind of basically burning money there. So anyways, that's a separate story. But right here, for the organic traffic that we got going on, a lot of this is branded, meaning people are finding you because of your name, which means they already know that you exist, which also means they're not really organic customers. You know, they're not new customers. They're not people that didn't know you exist at all. That's important to note. And as we go down the list, you know, it drops off substantially. We have a lot of like moderate keywords. And a lot of them are, again, gene sizes. That's great. And lo and behold, it goes to your size chart. You know, 
What a lot of SEOs focus on, like hyper focus on, or is the volume. The volume, while it's very important, especially for you know larger, broad category e-commerce brands, like for blue jeans, for example, there's a lot of money to be made in the lower volume keywords. Uh, you know, like even like gene size converter, gene is like these these one to five thousand search volume per month. It's like a sweet spot for some of our clients. But anyways, let's carry on. So we're looking for, first. We want to look and see what's driving the traffic. Okay, it's branded. Makes sense. Also, your homepage is the most trafficked you know page on your site. Also makes sense. What is this telling us? You know, not only is your brand you built a, a great brand. Well done, no doubt about that. Easily well done. However. Uh, you have a lot of SEO juice that could be put in other areas of the site, and that's just all the traffic's coming in from branded. So, anyways, now let's let's filter or sort by volume. Let's look at the keywords that best describe your brand that you probably rank for that have the highest search volume. Yes, I'm hyper focusing on volume again, but that's fine. Uh, that have the highest search volume, but also that you rank for somewhere, probably on like the pages five through nine. And these are the ones that we really want to juice higher. Prime example, chinos, skinny fit, skinny jeans, you know, all of these are, are banger keywords. And by that, I mean low difficulty, lower difficulty, high volume. So with a, D, a domain rating at you guys' space, at the age of your brand, where you guys sit, you can snipe keywords. And if you want to snipe keywords, we're going to talk about that because we're going to use it as an example for chinos. But sniping keywords is the main play you need to make here. Uh, how I really look at it, like for a newer e-commerce site, you want to really focus in on building authority, creating a lot of content around your specific vertical, vertical, answering every possible question that could be asked on multiple pages of your website, uh, and really building off of that. At this at this age, where Montembeau is, for example, you've already achieved topical authority. So what you're really pushing for now is sniping keywords. But these keywords are maybe keywords that you rank for already, just on the back half, you know, page five through 10. So Google's already seen you as an authority on the topic, just not as a top authority. So we get their opinion. Or as keywords that you know describe your industry that you don't rank for. So like, for example, like probably blue jeans straight up. Like I don't see that on here. And I imagine it's got massive search volume. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But first, let's look at chinos. Let's say that you came to me or, you know, you came to your, your director of marketing and you said, hey, guys, I want to rank for chinos. Why do we not rank for chinos? Why are we on the seventh page? It doesn't even make sense. Maybe I'm making an estimation here. One of our top selling products is chinos. So why, not, why are we not ranking for that? And if we look at your history over time, at best you ever ranked on was on the second page. So on the 16th or sorry, on 16th ranking, but back in April of last year. So we at least know you can get there, but we want to get you to the first page. This is actually very promising uh, because it shows that Google put you there once, it can get you there again. And also note that it's your collection page that's ranking. So we want to make sure that we're boosting that collection page, period. Looks like Google was a little bit confused for a while when they were with stuff, which based on this site structure, it looks like maybe you, you transitioned over to Shopify probably in January of 2022, if I had to estimate. Um, so maybe that happened there, who knows? But so that's probably been a big boon for your SEO. Anyways, carrying forward, we need to figure out how to rank for this higher. So let's take a look at the search results. So obviously, if we look up Chinos on the Keyword Explorer, you just click on it, and it'll show us, yep, massive volume. Yep, it's trending up. Checks out. It's got a cost per click. So, you know, other, others are bidding on it. Makes sense. You know, it's a type of blue jeans. It's got a difficulty level that is very attainable, especially for your domain rating, Montembeau. So let's take a look further. So what I'm looking down here now uh, is I'm going to look down here at the SERP at the SERP overview. This is a search engine results page overview. These companies here are just the companies that are currently ranking with with some data behind them, and it would look exactly the same if I just typed in Genos here or sorry Chinos, uh, but Genos is interesting. You should create a product Genos. Okay, so if you look at if you look at Chinos. Yeah, Bonobos exactly, Nordstrom, GQ. They're going to be the same ones that we see on this page. So, yep, Nordstrom GQ, exactly. But first, also while I'm here, I want to note this. If you want to get your page to rank higher, you know, answer all these questions or all the major questions inside of here, inside of that page itself. Yes, you're probably going to say, but that's a collection page. How do we do that? Oh, well, you just use Replo's section editor and you add an FAQ accordion to the bottom and you answer all these questions. But you have to make sure that it comes through as an H2 on that page, like we talked about earlier. But anyway, let's keep going further. What we're looking for here as well is we want to look for someone that doesn't necessarily belong. So 
Like for example, when I'm looking for like a lower domain rating and I'm looking for, you know, low, low backlinks uh, and I'm looking just to see like who maybe has ranked for this that maybe hasn't in the past. It looks like maybe Char Charlie's, uh, Charles, yes, Wit, something like that. Let's say if there's like lower than a lot of people. Oh, actually this one's, this one's way better. So this one here, uh, Peter Manning, New York. It's still a collection page. If you look at this, a lot of these are collection pages, which is good. Uh, just, yeah, I know I mentioned that earlier, but you want to make sure you match search intent. If people are searching for chinos, it sounds like they're searching for plural, multiple products, and that's further confirmed by all of these top ranking pages being collection pages. So you're on the right track there. Step one. So Google is ranking your right page there, but now we got to boost it. So let's take a look at this page exactly. The Peter Manning collections chino. Let's look at it both literally and from a data perspective. Let's just look at what they're doing. So men's chinos. We have a little bit of copy here. We love copy. Copy is what makes it rank. They got a big old selection here. They've got their style guides. Nothing super crazy. So why do they rank higher than a lot of other people for their low, low value? Oh, look, they've got a pretty strong heading structure. Men's chinos. Exact match. Men's chinos right here on the URL. Perfect match. Looking good. Decent number of, of words should be good enough, I imagine. Uh, right here, though, style guides and articles. So actually, Google is basically reading their headings of their style guides, and it basically makes it look like there's actual content on this page, even though there's really not, um, even though these are links to other, actually other articles. But again, going back to how important the heading structure is, when Google reads this page, they see that not only are you talking about chinos, clearly the page is about to have products, you're probably selling them, so you're getting a strong click-through rating, which is good, but also you care about the style of how you wear chinos. Chinos for shorter men, lightweight stretch chinos. All of these are long tail keywords for chinos. You know, how to wear layers, you know, period. All of these things is basically convincing Google that that they're ranked, they should be ranked higher. They're kicking way outside their coverage here with their domain rating versus everybody else who we're looking at them in like in like the group. So they probably have a bunch of blogs. I wouldn't be surprised, which we can take a look at too. So blogs and content in general are a means to an end. And by that, I mean uh, the content you're not – while it's great to embed products into blogs to then ultimately get them to click through to buy to buy the product, uh, that's the main way that you can really use to convert blogs. But blogs are providing Google with more ammo uh, to actually rank your website. So that's why we basically mass produce blogs and content is just a way for us to figure out, you know, hopefully show Google – what your site's more about and why you're the experts on chinos, for example. I'm just gonna quickly look at their top pages. This this might this might be nothing. They might not have anything here, but look at that. So a lot of their pages coming from blogs. Some are how to wear a vest, summer outfit ideas, how to wear, you know, dark jeans, etc. Let's look at their let's look at only chinos then. See how many blogs, if they have any, on chinos. Fifty-nine. That's pretty significant. Obviously, they have a lot of those products, but they also have a lot of Chino's blogs. Um, so that's pretty interesting as well. Let's see if it has blogs and Chino's in it. Let's see if we if how many we got eight eight blogs. So they have they have looks like one is duplicated for different languages, but still they have eight different blogs around Chino's. Period. That's significant. So food for thought here. The blogs are a means to an end, and the blogs are also helping them outkick their coverage. Uh, looking back at this search result here. So. That's important. If you want to, if you want to rank for chinos higher, step one, we need to basically answer a whole lot of questions onto your content page. So let's go back to where we ranked for that. Just a second. So what we're going to do here, first and foremost, is we're going to first find your collection page where it ranks for the chino jeans, if this wants to load. And once we find that, now we're going to talk about how to actually upgrade it and target this page for chinos. The everywhere chino, you know, while you do have chino up here, it is, you know, it, it's good. But let's say we want to take this thing to the nines. If we want to basically guarantee your page one ranking, step one is we're going to change this URL and we're going to create a redirect from the everywhere chino uh, to uh, men's chinos, for example. I think that's that's clearly the better keyword, just copying, you know, the, 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 the other website we just looked at. So step one. Step two, let's look at your heading structure. So again, we need to get we need to get the header of your heading structure. Remove that. Uh, you have multiple H1s here. That's an issue. You should only have one H1, and it should probably be maybe this one. 
since the chino you'll want to wear every day uh, and everywhere because it uses the word chino earlier on in the H1. While that's kind of an SEO myth, you know, I, why would you not follow it? You know what I mean? So we'd probably follow that. This could be a great H2, you know, uh, this would be an H3 then. And, or what I would really like to say is that, you know, H1, this is H2, all of these are also H2s. Because again, or maybe, yeah, this is an H2, these are H3s. But the goal is to make it, make it seem realistic, make it, make it make sense. This, somehow we're duplicating a lot of this. And I guess it's just probably the same product basically being shown over and over again. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure all this is the same. Yeah, the twill. Yep, exactly. So they're reading this heading here. We need to kill that. This should come through as a, as a paragraph text or as like basically like a just standard HTML text, and that'll fix that problem. Because what we're going to do next is add a whole lot of content onto this page. And the content that we add to this page is going to be exactly designed around what we need to type to rank. For example, we're going to answer all of these questions in the FAQ. You may write an entire blog post uh, almost independently about chinos, which end up may actually mimicking a lot of their blog posts here. Chinos for shorter men, lightweight stretch chinos, etc. You're basically going to create like chinos, the ultimate guide for 2023. You're going to you're going to write that bad, but post that to the very bottom of this chinos page. Uh, which once you post at the bottom of that, you know that actually should help this page rank substantially. Uh, because again, Google's just looking for more content to rank, more words. Uh, which are just ammunition to help get them there. So you're going to write a whole blog post, tack it onto the bottom. It's going to be perfectly optimized for chinos, and that blog post is going to be answering every question here possible. Um, another tool that you can use as well to kind of map this out is also Asked, which is a company that I love. Uh, so let's take a look here, and let's do chino jeans and see what we get. This is a good way to visually describe, you know, kind of the, the exact questions you need to answer and how. So what is Chino? Okay, look, like, look at this. So we got, let me see if I can scroll here a little bit. Yep. Are Chino pants thick? How are Chinos different from jeans? Are they supposed to be baggy? Are they nicer? You know, these are all H2s inside of a bigger H1 article, uh, or for example, like, so like Chino mean in jeans, the ultimate guide. You know, what you need to know about chinos versus jeans. Chinos versus jeans, 2023. You know, these are all like blog articles you can basically write. And what you're going to do is you're going to link up all of those articles up to this, this chinos page. And by doing that, you're not only basically tacking an article onto this page itself, literally at the bottom, to make this page rank higher, but then you're also creating that structure that we talked about earlier and having those supporting blogs then basically power up the main collection page as well. And this damn near guarantees you uh, ranking on page one, at least, or at least outranking where you've ever been in the past, which, um, again, you know, looking back at that, if I can find the keyword here, looks like at best you were on, I think you ranked 16th. So I think we could easily beat that. I mean, you guys have the authority to do it. You have the products clearly to do it. Uh, you just, we just need to, we just need to convince Google that you, that you belong on the page one. So. That's how you know. I mean, the answer in short is content, content, more content in the right places, period. So, okay, that was a lot for one example, but I think it pretty much describes how you can basically snipe and target and rank for any keyword ever. Uh, just also for your own references, you know, this same, this same technique can also be done, you know, on individual product pages themselves. But again, we want to optimize URL, optimize headings, add copy. That's step one for the product page, the collection page, and then old blogs. But again, blogs are a means to an end. Uh, but just looking at, you know, looking at these product URLs, like these are not even real words. Like you have so much opportunity to shift these around. And for example, what you could do is you could basically go back to your top pages. And we're going to filter for, because again, we always want to play into strengths. We're going to filter for, like, so for example, if you're going to say, okay, well, you know, Robert, what do I want to do here? If I've got all these products, how do I know which one to optimize first? Well, go down the list, but always play into strengths, meaning it's much easier to rank higher on a product page that is already ranking high than to rank on a product page that has no traffic because Google's already seen that page. So your changes are going to happen faster, which leads us back to the SEO, the age old question of how long does it take to make anything rank on SEO or whatever, get a, get a, to get an ROI. The answer is if you're playing the strengths and you're doing the right stuff, it shouldn't be a problem. It should be very quick. Like it should be literally, you know, days and weeks after you, make these changes, you start to see the results kind of pile in. So looking at this very clearly, I would start here, work your way down. Uh, you know, what I did is I filtered for products in the URL. I love this top pages report and I love the URL filter. 
because you can really kind of see what a site's all about, especially when looking at Shopify websites, because again, Shopify focuses on that main structure, the collection page, product page, blogs, etc. So looking at this, you start here, you start with this bad boy, which that might've been one of the ones we looked at and what you just got on the list, you go through all these and you do the exact same thing. You, you look at it and you would say, okay, what do I want this page to rank for? You can even look at what it actually already ranks for. And you can look at the, basically the keywords there and work backwards and say, okay, cool. What are the biggest opportunities? You know, I rank for, you know, V neck shirt on page seven. So how do I want to get that one higher? So you do that by filtering for volume as well. Right there. Okay, done. V neck. You're you're literally on page seven. That's hilarious. I didn't see that. So yeah, so you want to rank for V neck with this exact page. You do the exact same process. And with this difficulty and your guys' domain rating should not be you should be able to rip that easily. So Cool. So then you'd optimize that whole page just for V-neck and you, you just keep going down the list. You keep doing that and you optimize it with copy, with content, with adding it in there, just putting it in, in an FAQ, making sure Google can read it uh, because you have the heading structure properly and et cetera. So the exact same strategy we just touched on for collection pages can be done for product pages, can also be done for blogs. Um, you know, looking at other blogs, like let's say that maybe, you know, our client was this company in New York City, whatever. And they came to me and they said, you know, uh, I, I, we, we need to boost our SEO, but everything else is already great. And if I, we did the analysis, we saw their products were great, their collections had a ton of copy on it, had all the questions. If we did everything, great. Or if they already did. Then we'd want to focus on the blogs. Uh, and so what we do, the same way we do it, you want to refresh blogs. And what I mean by refresh is, again, go back and add all those more recently asked questions based on Google's to figure out, like just like we did with also asked and with this, you just do for whatever other topic the blog's about and tack it in on the bottom. So for example, how to wear a vest, you know, summer outfits for men. You want to start at the top, work your way down um, as far as optimization is concerned. But let's take a look at some of these and let's look at which ones are stagnant. Because the best ones to update with new with new copy are stagnant articles. But that are strong. So like let's see if this loads really quick. Okay, so actually almost all of them are stagnant, which is great, a good opportunity. For example, all of these, anything that's dipping down or that's staying flat is a great article that you could just update with new content. It's not rocket science. You just go and throw another thousand words on there that are based on the frequently asked questions and have the proper heading structure. If you do that right, you cannot fail. You literally cannot fail. You want to make it even better? You know, go ahead and embed a YouTube video. Uh, from that maybe your maybe your digital marketing uh, team on the ad side is using for their Facebook you know shorts or Facebook reels or whatever the case. So basically take that same video ad, embed it instead or as well onto the blog just to help you know completely push it up higher. If the blog is something you don't really necessarily care about people seeing, but you only care about profits and making making traffic make money, then go ahead and use like picturey.com and uh, create an AI version of the article, an AI video of the article, and make it like two to three minutes long and tack that onto the very top of the page as well. That will crush it too. We've had ridiculous results using these these little terrible videos, uh, but are just AI dictated and have built-in closed captioning and use stock imagery. So massive, massive impact there. Just to update these blogs, that alone will also get you higher. You know, if you have Instagram posts that are around these, like vests, for example, or summer outfit ideas, you can embed an Instagram post into the Shopify blogs. So do that. Reuse all of your assets everywhere. Reuse them and weaponize them onto your blog website and just watch the results fly because we're also chasing a better user experience. You know, if someone's reading the blog, they can go watch the video, which is basically like a dictated version of the blog, but they can watch it while they're on the treadmill or whatever. They won't. But that's how, that's how Google is trying to figure it out. You know, Google is a very simple algorithm as much as they are, you know, compiling all this crazy amount of data. Anything else they're looking for, you know, they spend money on. It's, it's like a resource spend. So if you can simplify that resource spend for them to crawl your weight, your metrics are going to go up drastically. So anyways, okay, so we covered a lot there. Um, but I think you guys got a pretty good idea on how you can snipe keywords and move basically anything upward. Uh, no matter what it is. But again, this is only a tactic to be used after, you use a, of a, after you've established topical authority and after your website probably you know has a pretty strong base foundation of organic traffic, uh, which is the case here. So now let's take a look at another one, uh, Her Free Soul, which it looks like it, it is, uh, you know, health products, looks like protein powder is probably one of their best sellers. It looks great. It's, it's targeting women. 
this is awesome. Uh, this is exactly the type of product that my wife would probably buy. Maybe she has, who knows? So uh, it's also based in the UK though. So not a problem, but actually there's, it's almost an opportunity because different countries have different values of search uh, for search keywords, difficulty, really there's competition based. Google breaks up all the keywords obviously by country based on the search intent. So maybe what you can do, which is very powerful for this type of strategy, is you can actually leverage US companies data, which might be more competitive, to then figure out what tactics and strategies worked best there and then apply them here to your site with easier to grab keywords and you'll absolutely dominate. I see it a lot actually with Australian companies. Uh, Australia, well, I mean, the market is, you know, it, it's a luxury market as far as e-commerce is concerned from what I've seen. Uh, and so the keywords though, have low difficulty, high ranking keywords that could really, you could do a lot of damage with, but separately. Anyways, we're on the UK talking about this. So her free soul. So her free soul, I mean, SEO wise, again, macro to micro looks really healthy. It looks strong. So that's great. Uh, but how can we maybe boost that even further? Just because it's strong doesn't mean it's not lacking, like in any way. We can always make it better. That's that's the wonder of Google's you know algorithm. We can always make it. We can always increase the velocity until it's near vertical. But anyways, whenever you strip this website's keywords down to go to page one only, so ranks one through three and four through ten, we can see that actually they're very stagnant on the page one rankings. So what this tells me is that why with their domain rating of 34 are also decent. Uh, they need actually they need help doing exactly what we just did, targeting specific keywords and ranking them higher faster. So you probably already rank for a ton of keywords. But let's look at the top pages too, which while we're here again, because we got to do that, macro to micro, it's you know words. To... Okay, going deeper, Cut top pages, compare pages, organic keywords. Let's just see what we're looking at. So it looks like your products actually are ranking very highly. Great work, that is awesome. And then your collections, perfect. Yeah, it's a good mix. And you also have blogs. So the blogs are down there. That's great. Uh, you probably don't have a lot, if I had to guess, just based on the fact that your top one is only like, <clears throat> is very low. But let's see. Okay, wow, you actually have a lot of blogs. They're not getting very much traffic, which is interesting. So that's it. We typically see this with unoptimized articles, basically. But the good thing is you have a ton of content here to, to pull from. But the thing about having too much content is if it's not an asset, it's a liability. Meaning if the article itself isn't drawing traffic or helping you out, it could actually be hurting you. Ah, and that's why. Short form blogs, the classic culprit. Uh, we need this to be at least on the words across the board. That's something that we do as a company mandatory for anything we create solely because it rules out the thin content or low word count from being a ranking issue. Uh, SEO, again, is all just backed on testing. That's all we're doing is just testing methodically and obsessively. But in order to do that properly, you have to change things to rule out, rule it out. So best practice is to make sure all words are above 2,000 words per article. So I can probably guarantee that, you know, all these articles probably are short form. And secondly, look at the headings. There's only an H1. While you nailed that H1, that's perfect. Not going to lie. You couldn't get better with that. Where it is a problem is these are not H1s. These should all, or sorry, H2s. These should all be H2s. Uh, very, very important. Uh, super, super key. We can go into more details on that. But all you have to do now, though, because these these blogs have been seen by Google. Let's filter. Let's sort by top keywords. So this is going to boost your over your overall SEO dramatically, drastically with very little effort. Uh, just by if you upgrade a few of these uh, blogs, really, and you just kind of go on the list. So <clears throat> here we go. We're sorting by keywords again because we want to make sure the ones that are the most seen, the ones that are trending upward, that's the ones we're going to look at. So it looks like this is a good one. Take a look at that one. Take a look at this one and this one. All you need to do is one, pinpoint the keyword you want to rank for, uh, period, within this, whether you rank for it now or not. You probably don't based on the keyword number, but then you want to retarget everything. Uh, this is actually a pretty good URL. Maybe clean it up so that way, like, it looks like in your blogs, you have a, a sub blog called blog. Let's remove that. Let's get that bad boy gone. So it only says blogs one time. Again, don't want to over optimize anything. So we just do that. We clean that up there. You create a redirect from this to the actual page. And while you're there, you remove the word the. You just do best vegan protein powder. Uh, and, and for women, you can leave that on there. Totally fine. But you're off of it and just have best vegan protein powder for the URL but then have best vegan protein powder for women in the H1, and that's super powerful. 
So that way you're kind of capturing both from different angles. So that way you'll actually rank higher for best vegan protein powder as well. Anyways, let's keep going. What else to do? Obviously make these uh, H2s done. You already know how to do that. Let's also look at, so now let's look at the, the top search questions. Um, obviously it's going to be easy for you guys to do it because you will be based in the UK if you're searching. Uh, but based on my US search results, it looks like best vegan protein powder for women. Okay, what's the most delicious? Is pro is vegan protein powder good for you? Is plant-based protein? So I guess another another whole series of questions you can have is what defines plant-based or what defines vegan protein powder? And like just hammering all these maybe almost technical concepts, you know, even answering questions like that could actually be interesting. Um, but you know, there's so much you can do with that. Period. Uh, what you can also do is you can also go more broad. So for example, if we're going back to also asked, we can just do protein powder, uh, which I cannot spell for the life of me. Let's just see if this works. And let's, oh, we can also obviously switch this to the UK. I don't know if I spelled protein right. Okay, I, I did not. Classic. Let me fix that really quick. Uh, but you guys, get, you guys get the gist. This will tell us exactly you know, what questions we need to have answered on that page or on some blogs. So this alone is going to cause you to rank up dramatically, very, very, very quickly. If you basically add a lot of these headings into these blogs, you beef these existing blogs up, they will go very, very far. I recommend you also, because SEO is all about testing, I recommend that you also, you know, start spinning up, you know, new blogs as well, but maybe even target the exact questions here that you can create into new blogs and just hammer it down. Looks like protein powder is probably your most, you know, searched uh, in probably product for your site for Free Soul. So I would just hammer all things protein powder. Every single question that people have searched for should be found somewhere on your website, and it should be optimized so Google can see that, read that, understand that, and then rank your website higher for it. So long story short, add more content, make sure it can be read by Google, uh, optimize URLs. And just focus on structure. But overall, I would say what you're doing, you're doing it great. I mean, just looking at the products, looking at everything ranking up. Um, but if you apply the same stuff that we talked about to snipe the keywords, we talked about earlier for Mont and Bo with your website, Her Free Soul, I think you guys would crush it. So maybe take a look at that. But uh, I think we're running out of time here today. But I think we covered two really good, very different strategies, you know, focusing on, you know, more of the mid to maturing uh, e-commerce site level. But again, all these tactics can be used at any level of an e-commerce store, at, you know, as a starter, you know, in the, in the mid-tier level, whatever. So, uh, just don't sleep on organic traffic. That's the main thing I have to say. You know, people are spending, just dumping, everyone here is dumping tons of money into paid traffic. Why not diversify that and build something that lasts, that lasts perpetually and constantly grows and ages well with your website? So SEO is first brand recognition. And secondly, it is conversions and sales. So cool. Justin, thank, any parting questions? Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Robert. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for showing up today. And we'll be posting this on YouTube and sharing on social. And uh, we'll be doing this again real soon. So yeah, Robert, thank you again. Really appreciate it. All good. I'm happy to be here, man. Take care, everyone.